Hello everyone, my name is Adarsh and welcome back to my series on data structures and today we are going to talk about queues. So my goal with the series is to look at data structures from a practical perspective, understand why they exist and what makes them special and even look at some practical applications that we use every day in software engineering. So we will start by answering why queues exist, then we will look at some queue operations and we will see how to implement them in Python and C++. So let's get started. So let's see what makes queues special. A queue is a data structure that follows first in first out principle, which means that the first item to enter the queue is the first one to leave it. So let's say a real world example, uh, four people A, B, C and D stand in a queue to buy something. So these people enter the queue in that particular order, right? So A first, B next, C next and D next. So after buying whatever they wanted and leaving the queue, they leave in that exact order, right? So they leave the queue in the same order as they entered it. So this is the first in first out principle. Whereas in a stack, like we discussed in my last video, the elements leave the stack in the reverse order that they entered it. In computer science, this pattern is useful when processes need to be executed in the order that they are created. It is also used to send messages to a receiver in the order that they were generated. Queues are useful in the scenario where there is only a single resource, but multiple objects want to access or use this resource. So a queue can be thought of like a waiting list for a resource. This resource can be a processor or maybe a service that executes a function or it could even be a receiver for a message. Introducing this concept of a waiting list for a resource helps us create asynchronous systems, increasing the processing speed and also ensures that uh, the resource is utilized efficiently. As a software engineer, learning about queues is necessary um, because I'm sure that you will use it at some point in your career. So here are some of the common places where uh, queues are used. Message queues are a general concept used for communication between processes. Basically, a sender sends a message and if the receiver cannot receive it immediately, uh, maybe because it is busy with something else or it is offline, the message instead of simply um, dropping off waits in some kind of a queue and when that receiver is ready to receive it the message is consumed or removed from that queue and like sent to the receiver for example when you send an email it waits in a queue called the smtp queue until the receiver logs into their inbox the same concept is applied when you send a message to someone who is not online on like a social network. Your message waits in some kind of queue on that on the server of the net social network and when the recipient comes online, it is sent to them or they get notified. Next is process scheduling queues. So all the processes running on your computer right now first wait in a queue called the ready queue uh, and they are waiting here to be executed by your processor. So this because most processors can execute only a single process at a time and there are various scheduling algorithms that decide which process should be executed next by the processor based on some certain criteria. So all processes wait in this ready queue and they wait for the scheduling algorithm to pick them up and send to the processor for execution. So a buffer implements a queue and is typically used in communication when there is a difference between the rate at which the data is received and the rate at which it can be processed. So for example, in video streaming applications, the video is streamed in bursts and stored in a buffer so that even if the network becomes slow for a while, the playback is not interrupted. Say, for example, a video is playing at 24 frames per second on your computer and the streaming app may actually store 240 frames in its buffer so that it can continue playing for the next 10 seconds even if the network is interrupted for a few seconds. So this buffer space is also used for sequencing frames. That is if frames come out of order for some reason through the network. They are stored in the buffer and sorted in the buffer before being played. Buffers are also uh, used commonly in disk drives, input output devices and communication over networks in general. Queues are also used in several algorithms like the breakfast search or BFS algorithm and round robin algorithm. Now that we understand the importance of queues, let's look at some of the queue operations. So like I mentioned, a queue implements FIFO. So it can be visualized like this. 
let this be the front of our queue and let this be the back of our queue so where adding a new element occurs at one end so say from the back and removing it occurs from the other end so in our example it is from the front this ensures that the first element added is always the first one to exit the queue so this is the only pattern that you need to remember so there are two main queue operations they are nq and dq adding an element to a queue is called nqing and removing an element from a queue is called dq so if i say nq10 then it simply means that add 10 to the back of the queue and if i say dq that simply means that remove whatever element uh, that is at the front of the queue right now and return its value there are also operations to view the current elements in the front or the back of the queue so front returns the value of the element that is in the front of the queue and back or rear this returns the value of the element that is at the back of the queue which is the element that was just inserted right and front basically gives the value of the element that is going to be um, removed or dequeued next now let's look at the implementation of queue in Python and C++. In Python, you can use the inbuilt data structure list itself as a queue. So to do that, you can say queue is equal to. Now to end queue, you can use the append function. So queue dot. Now you can see the queue. And in this case, um, this is the front and this is the back right because the most recently added element is to the back and so now to perform the dq operation you can do q dot pop of zero so to remove the element on index zero since this is the front now similarly the uh, front and back operations can simply be implemented using uh, indexing q of zero would give you the front and q of minus one uh, will give you the back now in C++ uh, the STL or standard template library already has an implementation of queue which you can use so to declare a queue you can say queue and the type that you want the queue to hold right so here I am making a queue of integers so I'm using int here int queue now to perform the nq operation we will use the push function so q dot push means um, 7 is added to the uh, back of the queue right so 7 is added first then 4 then 10 and to dq you can use the pop function and for front and back uh, we have respective uh, functions called front and back now let's uh, run this now you can see that the output is 4 and 10 this was because a 7 was added first enqueued first 4 next and um, 10 next and when you popped uh, the first element that was enqueued is uh, removed and remaining 4 is the next one going to be removed and that's why that is the output of um, front and 10 is at the back so that is the output of q dot back so thank you so much for watching this video please do not forget to like this video and do subscribe to my channel for more such videos and i will see you in the next one